that God has a plan. <laughs> I said God has a plan. He always has a plan in place to get you out of that thing, to get you out of that situation that binds. This is what he did for the people of Israel. And in the midst of their confusion and their cries for help, God sent ten plagues to decimate Egypt. And he forced Pharaoh to open up his hand. And let the people of God go. I want to say to you this morning. God is about to prize open. That thing. That situation. That circumstance. That has you bowed. God is about to prize it open. And let you go. What is interesting is that. Although the people of God. Found themselves held up. In Egyptian bondage. They were situated in a place called Goshen. Goshen has tremendous prophetic implications for you and I. Let's hear what our text has to say this morning about this place called Goshen. And this morning we are reading three short passages of scripture. The first one is found in Genesis chapter 45. And we are reading two verses, verse 10 and 11. Genesis 45, 10 and 11. Next scripture is found in Exodus chapter 8, 22 and 23. Exodus 8, 22 and 23. And the third passage of scripture is found in Exodus 11, 1 to 3. Three portions of scripture. I read, you will follow in your Bibles. Genesis 45, 10 and 11. It says... You shall dwell, and this is Joseph speaking to the children of Israel. He said, you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near to me. You and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have, there I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of famine. And we know the story well. Joseph had gone ahead into Egypt. He was promoted. He became the prime minister. He was a man of influence. And Joseph had some dreams. And in the dream, God showed him that there would be a famine that would ravage the land. First, there would be seven years of plenty. And then there would be seven years of famine. And so God gave Joseph wisdom. He built uh, many storehouses and stored up grain and food. During the seven years of plenty, so that they would have uh, provisions during the time of famine. And so the time of famine had come. And there was famine across the land. And so when they heard that Joseph and Jacob heard that Joseph was the prime minister in Egypt, he relocated his family to Egypt. That is how they ended up in Egypt. And so Joseph is now speaking to them saying, You will dwell in the land called Goshen. So let's read on. Exodus chapter 8, 22 and 23. So this is now several hundred years after Joseph and Jacob. The children of Israel, they were... In the land for about 400 years. And they were in bondage. Listen to what the Lord is saying to them. Exodus 8, 22. And in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen. In which my people dwell. That no swarms of flies shall be there. In order that you may know that I am the Lord. In the midst of the land. I will make a difference. Between my people. And your people. God is speaking to Pharaoh. Tomorrow this sign shall be. We now go to Exodus chapter 11. Verse 1 to 3. So we are smack in the middle of the. Execution of the plagues. Judgment. The plague of the flies was the. 
fourth plague, I believe. But let's go down to Exodus chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. It says now, so at this point, nine plagues had been executed on Egypt. And so God is coming to Moses. He says, and the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people and let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. May the Lord bless the reading of his word or hearing. This morning, I'm speaking on the subject, Goshen, a prophetic picture of the end time church. A prophetic picture of the end time church. And so, we are in this situation here in the text where God is executing judgment. And although the children of his, Israel had to go through the crisis of these ten plagues, like the rest of the Egyptians, they were not consumed by the crisis, as the Egyptians were. You say, well, why? Because their presence in Goshen insulated them from divine judgment. Remember, they were in Goshen. Goshen then is a prophetic picture of the end time church. Because although we are faced with a season of crisis, crisis that is affecting the whole world, and many of you are still in crisis, you need to know that that crisis is not going to consume you. That's a prophetic word. The crisis that you are facing is not going to consume you. And this is what we see in the Goshen experience. In fact, there are three prophetic messages that Goshen echoes to us today down through the corridors of time. The first message is this. As the end time church, we are predestined to enter a season of crisis. We will face crisis. When the children of Israel first arrived in Egypt, there was a global famine. And they were directed by Joseph, their divine sponsor, to dwell in the land of Goshen. Goshen was a fertile area located east of the Nile River. It was among the best part of the land in Egypt. The name Goshen means safety and prosperity. And prophetically, it speaks of occupation of territory within the enemy's camp. Because that is what the Israelites were doing. Remember, Egypt was an enemy. And yet, they were in the bowels of Egypt in this land called Goshen. Because when you are located in Goshen, and this is the prophetic word. When you are located in Goshen, you are positioned to flourish even in the midst of a crisis. Amen. I thought I would get a bigger amen. I said when you are located in Goshen, you are positioned to flourish even in the midst of crisis. Amen. This was the experience of the children of Israel. However, after Joseph died, a new Pharaoh rose to power, who did not know Joseph. He did not know Joseph at all. And he became very threatened by the growth and the prosperity of the Israelites. And so he decided to put them in captivity. He tried to suppress their growth and prosperity, but he couldn't stop it. And sometimes the enemy will try to stop your growth. He'll try to stop your advance. Only to discover that he can't. He might derail you for a little while. 
He might slow you down for a little while, but he cannot stop what God has commanded to prosper. He cannot stop what God has blessed. Somebody needs to know that this morning. And the more Pharaoh tried to suppress the people, the Bible says the more they began to grow, the more they began to multiply because of that Goshen anointing upon their lives. But the thing is this, although they were destined to prosper, they were also predestined to enter a season of crisis. You say, but that don't make sense. Hold on. You see, several hundred years before, while they were yet in the loins of their forefather Abraham, God spoke a prophetic word to Abraham about their sojourn in Egyptian bondage. Listen to what God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. I want you to take note of these scriptures. Genesis 15 verses 13 and 14. This is a prophetic word that God gave to Abraham. Hundreds of years before, even before Abraham had children. This is the word that God released to him. God says, then he said to Abraham, No, certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. And they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Hundreds of years before this incident that we're reading about, God gave a prophetic word Amen. detailing what would happen. God is a God who knows the end from the beginning. He upholds us in his right hand. It, in fact, the Bible says we are inscribed on the palm of his hands. He knows your future. That's why the best place to be is in the presence of Almighty God. He's the one that could guide you. He's the one that could lead you. Amen. So what we see here is that what started off as a place of comfort and prosperity turned into a place of discomfort and pain. But I want you to notice something. Although they were being oppressed, although they were being suppressed, they were still in Goshen. That is very significant. That is good news. Because what that means is that their pain, their pressure was temporary. It had an expiry date. You may be in a place of pain now, but know that it has an expiry date. Amen. After you've suffered for a while, God is going to bring you out Amen. at the appointed time. But I know what someone may say. They will say, well, why does the righteous suffer? We suffer because it's part of God's plan. And God's plans are always good. You don't believe me? Do you remember what the scriptures said about the suffering of Jesus? In that famous chapter of Isaiah chapter 53, the prophet said in verse 10, that it pleased God to bruise Jesus and put him to grief. Yes, that's in your, your Bible. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Why would it please God to bruise his only begotten son. Isaiah gave us the reason in, a, in, in some of the earlier verses. A familiar portion of scripture. In Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5, he says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was Bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. It pleased God to bruise Jesus because that was the only way to redeem sinful man. 
You see, I tell you, God has a plan. The problem is we don't always understand the plan. But God's plans are always good. The Bible says there's no variableness. There's no shadow of turning in him. All good things come down from God, from the Father of lights. All his plans are good. He said through the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have towards you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are good plans. They are good thoughts. He wants to give you a hope and a future and an expected end. All of God's plans are good. Amen. It's just that we don't always understand the plan of God. And that's why we are told, for this reason the Lamb of God was slain when? When was the Lamb of God slain? From the foundation of the world. It was a part of God's plan Amen. for the ages. Jesus was predestined to enter a season of suffering because that was the only way to redeem you and I. Now you understand why Isaiah said it pleased God to bruise him. That was the plan. The God we serve is a God of planning. He's very strategic. He's not a vaps God. He's a God of plans. And so, likewise, the end chime church, we too have been predestined to enter a season of suffering. You say, why? So that we can be purged, so that we can be prepared for the master's return. Amen. You may be in a place of difficulty now. Nothing may seem to be working out yet. I want you to know that that period of adversity it is but for a season you need to know that there is a purpose behind your pain it's to prepare you for the return of the lord because the lord himself says i am coming back for a church with what without spot or wrinkle he's not coming back for a spotted church he's not coming back for a wrinkle up church no, he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. Amen. And so you have to be prepared for his return. You have to be purged of the impurities and the dross and those things that defile. You have to be prepared. And this is why we go through that period of suffering. That's why the Apostle Paul himself said, all those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, not might, will. Anybody that telling you that Christian not supposed to suffer, run. That is a direct contradiction to the word of God. That is a false doctrine. That is a doctrine of demons and devils. Run from that. The word of God says all those who live godly in Christ Jesus, will suffer persecution. This is how the Apostle Peter put it now. He says, he says, do not think it strange. Don't think it strange. Don't think, you're, don't think that you know your maljo or your curse or something like that. He says, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. There is a purpose behind it, I said. It is to prepare you for the return of the Lord. Don't think it's strange. Don't think that you're cursed. Don't think that you're going to get a bush bat. <laughs> there is a purpose behind your pain. It is to prepare you for the return of the Lord. Peter said, don't think it's strange. As though some strange thing happened to you. As the end time church, the Goshen experience testifies that we have been called and appointed to enter a season of crisis. Nevertheless, in the same way that the children of Israel were protected, you will be protected. Because some go through the waters. That's what this, the songwriter said. Some through the floods. Some go through what? Great fires, but all through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's going to bring you through. 
This leads me to the second prophetic message that we can extract from the Goshen experience. And it's this. As the end time church, not only are you called to go through a season of suffering, but God is going to preserve you through that period of suffering. He's going to preserve you through the crisis. As we saw in the text, the children of Israel were right there in Egypt when those ten plagues devastated the land. Yet, they were preserved through the crisis. You say, why? It's because of their location. Somebody say the word location. location. They were located within the confines of Goshen. The place where God dwelt. It was a place that provided a canopy of divine protection against divine judgment. My question to you this morning, where are you located? If you are located outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you are located in Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. A world that opposes everything that God stands for. Those who are located in Egypt will not be preserved, but they will be consumed by the crisis. They will be swept away. But those who are located in Christ Amen. will be preserved through the crisis. Amen. And prophetically speaking... Your location in Christ puts you within the confines of Goshen. Amen. The place of security and prosperity. And because of your location, you will be preserved through any and every crisis that comes your way. Amen. That's why the Bible refers to us as overcomers. The only way that you can be called an overcomer is if you overcome some things. If you're not an... <laughs> God wouldn't call us an overcomer if it didn't mean that we had to overcome some things. You are an overcomer means that you will face some trials. You will face some crises. But you're going to overcome. Because God is with you. And because of your location, you will be preserved. You will be preserved through the crisis. I want us to examine this morning how God preserved his people while they were located in Goshen. On day one, when the first plague hit, it says that all of the water in Egypt, water in the river, water in your buckets, water in your house, wherever water was located, it was turned to blood. Everything in the water died. The Bible says that the place stank. Could you imagine that? Dead fish, dead plants in the water. The whole of Egypt was smelling like foul. You know, it was terrible. And then on the heels of that came plagues number two and three in quick succession. And there was a release of frogs. There was a release of lice. And so the Egyptians started to reel. They were tormented by these early plagues. And yet, Pharaoh continued to harden his heart. He refused to let God's people go. And sometimes the crisis that you are facing will refuse to let you go even in the day of deliverance. Because those plagues represented deliverance. But yet... Three plagues hit Pharaoh like three bullets. Boom, boom, boom. And it says he refused. Sometimes the crisis that you are dealing with is a tough crisis. In fact, the crisis that we are called to face in this season is no ordinary crisis. Sometimes the crisis is like a dog fight. Where the battles are so fierce that the enemy just doesn't want to relent. It's like he's holding on and he's holding on and he's holding on. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you find yourself in a crisis. 
No matter how hard you fight. No matter how hard God fights for you. It seems like the enemy just wouldn't die. The enemy just wouldn't go away. That situation still swollen you by your scruff and trying to squeeze the living daylights out of you. But how many of you know weeping may endure for a night but what? Joy comes in the morning. Your morning is around the corner. Although the battle rages, God is going to preserve you through the crisis. This is the testimony of the Goshen experience. Let's see how God continue to preserve the people through the plague crisis. In Exodus chapter 8, verse 22 and 23. Listen to what God said to Pharaoh. In that day, you, Mr. Pharaoh, you refuse to let them go? All right? In that day, I'm going to make an example out of you. I'm going to set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, so that you, Pharaoh, will know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. The crisis represents sometimes the presence of God in the land. He is a mighty deliverer. He is a consuming fire. Amen. God says, I will make a difference between my people and your people. Amen. Tomorrow, wait for it. So God released flies across the land of Egypt, tormenting the people. There was no escape. Everything in Egypt was covered with flies. Utterly de detestable. I mean, flies is one of the things I just can't stand. Could you imagine that? You eating home. You see one, to me, one fly is more than enough. Two fly, three fly, you going crazy. You can't eat in peace. You get out your box spray. You're spraying all over the place. You're spraying your food and all. <laughs> but could you imagine thousands of flies? Could you imagine sitting in a room and just a whole thousands of flies all over? That is the situation that they were facing in Egypt. Flies all over the place. Flies all over people. All over your food for days. Detestable. But what was interesting is that while these flies were inundated, the Egyptians, a few meters away, in the land of Goshen, not one single fly was to be found amidst the people. Why? Because of God's seal of protection was established in that place. I thought I would get a bigger response. You see, when God puts a seal upon your life, it's going to set you apart from the heathen. It's going to draw a line in the sun. A line of distinction. You are set apart unto the Lord. The weapons may be formed, yes. But they will not prosper. You will go through the crisis, yes. But the crisis is not going to go through you. In other words, it will not consume you. Because the seal of God is upon your life. That is what protects you. That is what preserves you through the crisis. This is the seal that preserved the children of Israel while they were in Goshen. And it didn't just protect them against the onslaught of the flies, but against the onslaught of the other plagues. When the livestock of the Egyptians was struck with disease and death, it says that the livestock of the Israelites in Goshen were spared. In other words, they had food in the midst of a famine. Because if God was killing out all their livestock, they didn't have any meat. But in Israel, in Goshen, they had plenty food, plenty meat. When it rained hail and brimstone across the land, it says there was no hail in Goshen. That means that they had a shelter in the midst of a storm. How many of you know that Jesus is your shelter in the midst of a storm? He shields you. He protects you. He covers you. He is a protection. 
Then it says when a darkness, there was a darkness that came into the land. It says the darkness could be felt. Yeah. I never experienced that kind of darkness. And it says for three days, that darkness lingered in the land of Egypt. Yeah. But in Goshen, a few meters away, the Bible says they had light. Yeah. That meant that you are light in the midst of darkness. We are a people of light in the midst of global darkness. And this lets us know that God is going to light our path. He's going to guide our way safely through the crisis because we have the light. He is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. He's going to guide us, direct us through the crisis. Amen. That's why God sent me with this word to remind you of his promise. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody needs to know that. Amen. You're feeling alone. You're feeling lost. God says, I will never leave you Amen. nor forsake you for I am with you even unto the end of the age. And because he's with you, he's going to preserve you through the crisis. But there's a third and final message that reverberates from the Goshen experience. And it's this. As the end time church, God promises to promote us beyond the crisis. Remember I said that that crisis has an expiry date. You see, God is not just about preserving. He's getting ready to promote you beyond the crisis. He's already looked ahead. He's already seen the finish. You don't believe me? Let's see what God did in Exodus chapter 12. In Exodus chapter 12, from verse 12 and following, God came to Moses he says, I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And then he says, the blood shall be for a sign for you and the houses where you are. And when I see the blood... I will pass over you. What a powerful word. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Later on in the chapter it says, And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh. Notice, Pharaoh didn't get spared. Who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night. He and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Could you imagine that? Amen. Thousands of people slaughtered in one night. It says he called for Moses and Aaron and said... Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Now the children of Israel had done according to the words of Moses, and had asked the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered. The Egyptians. You see how God does do things? He didn't just end the crisis. He ended it in style. Amen. With this final plague. Destroy the firstborn of man and beast. None was spared. And this was one of the bloodiest nights in the history of Egypt. But I want you to look at the contrast. While there was unbridled cries of anguish. In the camp of the Egyptians, a few meters away in the land of Goshen, there was another type of cries to be heard. They were cries of joy and relief. Because after 400 years of captivity, in one night, freedom came. 
the God that you serve, the God that I serve, in one night can bring about your deliverance. In one night, he can bring about your healing and your breakthrough. He's the God of the breakthroughs, sudden breakthroughs. In one night, what a night it was. And God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this plague, it shall not come upon you. God says, I'm passing over you right now. I'm passing over you. And because you are under the blood, freedom is going to come surely and swiftly. Amen. I said freedom is going to come. Because when God brings freedom from the crisis, he's going to do it in style. Amen. With the freedom will come promotion. Hallelujah. Notice where promotion comes from. It doesn't come from the east. It doesn't come from the west. It doesn't come from the north or the south. It comes from God. Amen. He's the one that promotes us. And when God freed his people back in Goshen, he didn't just break the back of Egyptian rebellion and let the people out. No. He did it in style. He let them out because they were well stocked. They were well stuffed. With the goods of Egypt. It says that God gave them favor. With their captors. I want to say to you this morning. A time is coming when God is going to make those pay. Who cause you pain. Amen. You hear what I'm telling you? Yes. There is going to come a season when the people that made you suffer pain. God is going to make them pay for it. He's the only one that can transform your biggest haters into your biggest helpers. That's what happened in the text, you know. The Egyptians were their biggest haters. But when they were being freed, when they were being delivered, they became their biggest helpers. Amen. Only God can do that. Amen. The people who once oppressed them were the same people now who were blessing them. God can turn your oppressors into your blessers. You hear what I'm telling you? That's why the Bible says the, the, the wealth of the unrighteous is stored up for the people of God. God can flip the script. He can turn your oppressors into your blessers. You better believe it. But beyond the blessing of the exodus, God promoted his people. Remember, they were in a pressure cooker. In Egypt. And where did he promote them to? The promised land. The land that was flowing with milk and honey. With abundance. That's how God does things. So I want to say to you get ready. God is about to promote you beyond your crisis. Into the promised land. And as we conclude this message this morning. I want to remind you that the God that we serve is a speaking God. Amen. He's speaking to us even now. Amen. As we face the crisis that is covering the earth. God is speaking to us. What is he saying? He's saying three things to us this morning. Through this Goshen experience. Firstly, he says, you've been predestined. To enter a season of crisis. But don't need, there, there's no need to panic. Why? Because secondly, I will preserve you through the crisis. Some of you are going through a crisis. You need to know that God's hand of protection is upon you. He's preserving you. You'll go through the crisis, yes. But the crisis will not go through you. It's not going to consume you. Instead, the third thing that God wants you to know is that he is going to promote you beyond the crisis from your place of pain to that place of purpose. There is a purpose behind your pain. And finally, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even unto the end. Gird up your loins. And prepare yourself to conquer your crisis. With all heads bowed, all eyes closed.
I want you to take a minute to examine yourself before the Lord. The word of God has been proclaimed and there's much that the Lord has given us to think about. God says this is not a season to doubt. This is not a season to question what God is doing in your life. This is a season to draw close, to draw near to the Lord so that you can hear what God is saying to you in this season. God is saying, draw close. I am with you. I am here to preserve you and protect you. I am here to keep you. Yes, sometimes the burden may seem heavy. It may seem like you can't carry it. But God says, you were never designed to carry it in the first place. I am your burden bearer. He says, come learn of me. Take of my yoke. He says, my burden is light. Lay it down before him this morning. So mighty God and Father, I pray that you will touch each person here within the sound of my voice. Those who are watching online. Minister as only you can, mighty God. And I hear the word that God is saying, many are burdened. Many feel like they want to give up. And so, mighty God, we know that your anointing is able to destroy yokes and burdens. And so we release the anointing of God right now upon you to break yokes and chains and burdens right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are lifting those weights. You're removing those burdens off of your people, mighty God. Even now, break every yoke and every chain of the enemy right now. Some of you have the burdens of past memories and hurts that is holding you back. God says, I am erasing those memories right now. Erase every memory, every hurt, every pain, every scar. Mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, there is a balm of Gilead. Minister healing to the hurts and the emotions, mighty God. In the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. And in this type of atmosphere, if there's anyone, you've heard the word, and you've examined yourself, you know that you are located outside of Christ. You're not in the Goshen, the confines of Goshen. You want to make your calling and election sure. If there's anyone you want to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, lift your hands this morning. We're going to see it. We're going to pray with you and for you. Is there anyone like that this morning? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Can we stand in the presence of the Lord? Sing it like I mean. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Come on, could we get the words to that song? Sing it again. Draw me nearer.
Hallelujah. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to Thy prayer. give him all the praise let every hand be lifted we give him all the praise we give him honor and glory we magnify his name we glorify his name he's worthy of our praise he's worthy of honor he's worthy of glory i want to open up the altar if there's anyone here this morning you are going through a situation you're facing a crisis and you need some extra prayer support come to the front quickly all right come to the front quickly don't come after we have prayed and then you come towards the end no we want everyone to come now and we're gonna pray with you and for you we want to do things decently and in order all right you know what the spirit of the lord is saying to you you know that you need prayer come to the front all right, so we're going to cut it off after we've prayed here. For those who are standing here, we're going to cut it off. Don't come after we have done, please. All right? We want to do things decently and in order. Come on. Lead us in an appropriate song, Brother Terry. A song of worship. Let every hand be lifted in the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. I worship you. Almighty God, there is none, there is none, there is none like you. Hallelujah. I worship you, oh Prince of Peace. That is what I thank you. We release strength upon you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, I condemn right now in Jesus' name. I release the anointing of God upon you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. provision new door new door have been opened up even now in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus every barrier every obstacle that is standing in your way for provision I remove right now in the name of Jesus thank you Lord I thank you for supernatural favor and finances coming into his life in Jesus name in Jesus name amen In the name of Jesus, uproot yourself. Uproot yourself. Go right now in Jesus' name. No one else can touch In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I use the sword of God. 
I cut asunder every demonic attachment to your life right now. I pray every worship you. And I release the peace of God upon your heart and mind right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every yoke of bondage I break and destroy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I lose you right now from every entanglement in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, put your seal. Put your seal upon him, heaven. Put your seal upon him right now. In Jesus' name. Set him apart, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak peace over your heart and mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is none like you. I release the fire of God upon you. In Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Like in the name of Jesus, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost no upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, fire in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the fire in your body right now. In the name of Jesus, every drug, every impurity, I command you to pass that like you out of this body right now. Every unclean spirit, every unclean spirit in this vessel, come out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every unclean spirit, come out in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Use it right now. Use it. In Jesus' name, every unclean spirit, I terminate your assignment. No one else. I terminate your assignment. Come out of this vessel. Out. Yes. Come up and out. Out. Come out of him now. In Jesus' name. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus. Out. Come out of him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bring your presence. Bring your glory. Let the weight of your glory rest upon him right now. Let the weight of your glory rest upon him. Let the weight of your glory rest upon him, glory rest upon him. Rest upon him right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, lose him right now. Lose him. Lose him right now. You want to spirit. I command you. Lose him right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can't stay in this body. Every unclean spirit. I command you. I command you. Come out, out of this vessel right now, in Jesus' name. Come up and out of this vessel right now, in Jesus' name. Come up and out, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on, lose him right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, come out, out, out of him, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah.
Father, we thank you. There is none Lord, like you. Lord, even before we come to you. And so right now I release strength. No one is strength into a life. Like in the name of Jesus. Patience. I will in the name of Jesus. The Mighty God, is the anointing of all fresh upon your door of Christ. Mighty work in our life, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Touch the young man, Lord. Raise him up, Lord. No one else can touch my heart. Lord, I thank you that your presence is a perfect door. You are insulated. You are protecting us right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, I condemn right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those haters. This you are going to call you to become a greatest helpers. Mighty God, Father, I pray that you will minister to those creatures. Let there be a change. Let there be a transformation in their hearts, in their lives. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the strength and the grace you're releasing upon your daughter right now.
congregation stretch forth your hands father we thank you for what you have done in Kevin's life thus far and I declare that no weapon that is formed against him will prosper and every tongue that rises up in judgment I condemn every demonic assignment for this life I terminate right now in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus, precious Holy Spirit, I invite you to fall fresh upon Kevin. Fall fresh upon him, Lord. Break every yoke and every chain of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. Let there be a divine release of the fire of God upon him. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, fall fresh with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn every dross every impurity cleanse this vessel cleanse his mind cleanse his soul we apply the blood of Jesus 
upon your life from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet the blood is still efficacious right now every spirit that is at work against his life we bind right now with cords and fetters that cannot be broken i muzzle the enemy and i lose kevin right now in the name of jesus you are loosed you are free in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus lord i thank you for transformation in his thoughts transformation in his life transformation in his actions and his words mighty god transformation from the inside out in jesus name amen and amen god bless you god bless you could we put our hands together for the lord he is worthy to be praised sister carol Hallelujah. God is good. All the Goshen dwellers. You might be going through a crisis, a hard time at this time. Remember God is the greater one resides in you. He said he'll never leave you. He's in you. He will preserve you and he will protect you. And he will prosper you. Amen. Let us give our pastor a hand of praise for that tremendous message. And get ready to bring in all the tithes and the offering at this time as we call on the worship leader to just in a time of 